deals and dollars, it's really not that complex. <clears throat> like in terms of making money in real estate, it's like a formula. It's like, you know what Tony Robbins says, there's a science of achievement and uh, art of fulfillment. The reality is I know so many people who have succeeded in real estate, but they help feel fulfilled. Why? Because they're, they're not focused on their real lives. Like you can't only run away from your wife for so many years until you get divorced. Right? My gosh, my best friend, <laughs> Brendan De Silva. Uh, I've been, we were de absolute degenerates together That's from true. sixth, seventh, all the way up till about college. And the transformation you have and you had, God had in your life to where you are now, it's just incredible, Brendan. It's an honor to have you on the show again for a round two. Round two. How you doing, brother? Well, I was one of the OGs, I'm realizing. So that was actually pretty cool. Because I, I was just, like, as we're talking right now, I'm really thinking. Because I remember when you said you were going to do the podcast. I was like, huh, what do you even talk about? And then, like, you know, 50 something episodes later, it's gone very well. You guys have had like big names. I'm like, wow, oh, this is just so cool. <laughs> so, no, I, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's good, man. Glad to be back. Is he sure. the first number two? <laughs> no, right? But here was number one, I think. I think he was top three, but I'll tell you what, he had the most engagement podcast <sighs> year to death for, um, of no, all time. No, yeah. no, no, yeah, of yeah, all I think time. so. Oh. Yeah, of Still? all time. No. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> I should have negotiated wow. my way in. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, that's pretty cool. That's, I like that. That's nice. Hey. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to say something. Cool. No, but um, yeah, wow. That's, is that real? Do you guys think it's true? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Brendan, for the audience that didn't listen to the first podcast, can yeah. you just give everyone a little background, who you are, what you do, what you know, your story? Okay, so high level, uh, name is Brendan De Silva. I run two different companies. One is not doing so well. One is doing well. We have the short-term rental management, De Silva Hospitality. We've kind of stopped growing it. We only take on clients now that we just like absolutely love them. We set super realistic expectations, and then we do Airbnb. And they actually still do pretty well, but it's not as profitable as I thought it was. So that's one bad business. The good business is real estate sales. And that's what like the Silva team, number one in the Newark for sure, like three years running. Helping residential market buy, sell the whole nine, partner with Leverage now four years. Mm -hmm. But I actually grew up, Brazil, my child of Brazilian immigrants, very dysfunctional home, beautiful family in terms, one sense, very dysfunctional, another, but very poor. Like we were like displaced several times, living in my dad's car, one or two nights, and then my dad's store back in Lindhurst actually, he had like this store that was selling like graphic tees. So whoever, have you ever worked like a screen printing shop? Yeah, my first business. Okay, you know that smell? It's like the, they have like a, that like the chemical. Emulsion. Smell? Emulsion. That, that was, so yeah. I grew up on that. Like that was like my fragrance in the home because we lived in the, like my dad's <laughs> wow. shop. So he was like, he made, like he framed out like she rocked like two different rooms. One was for him and my mom and then one was for us. So it was like two bunk beds in that room. You and, you and your three siblings. Yeah, we were in one room and we would always walk. It was like when you came from school, you would walk through the front of the store like there was a warehouse with like these big machines they would do with the screen printing. Yep. And it was just always a smell. And sometimes I'll put my hand in and go, just to smell what it was. I'm like, oh God. We give you a little bit of a high at the yeah, same it time. Definitely did. It definitely I was like did. 10 years old though. I, re <laughs> I remember we would make shirts for like all day uh -huh. with, with, the, with the heat. You had the heat thing and you'd pass it. And we'd walk out of there like just like, like yeah. in the clouds. Yeah. In the cloud. That was definitely you at like age. By like eight. Oh, <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> that explains no. a lot. That, I was just about <laughs> yeah. to say. And yeah, so fast forward, now I'm 29, happily married, live in Newark, thank God, my church in Newark, my business in Newark, pretty much my life ends in Newark. Mm. Like it begins and ends like in Newark. So even though I moved like 13 times by the time I was 11, the only constant in my life, crazy enough, was a church in Newark called CCP in Ironbound. I love CCP. Great church, shout out CCP, English Ministry, 1215 Sundays, come as you are. <laughs> but that was like the only constant in my life in terms of location. So mm. then like I left... When I left the church, I went to New York for college, enjoyed myself. I go to Virginia for a school for like two months. I get kicked out, go to jail for like, uh, you know, I ended up going to jail for like six months after I graduated. So I got, I got arrested when I was 20. I got on bond. Like I got on bond like four days later. I finish up my junior and senior year at Nyack College. They like took me back. Very, very like, well, like grateful for that. I did 47 or 48 credits my senior year. Wow. I dated a girl, which is like another part-time job. And I had like a 30-hour <laughs> week. Wait, job. Yeah, literally. Good but shit. I had like a... <laughs> Dependent. <laughs> I had, I had a, uh, a waiting job, actually. I was waiting tables, Buffalo Wild Wings, which actually I think is very good if you want to be in sales to wait tables. Because I was making one, like a thousand bucks a weekend in college, cash. 
800, 900, $1,000 a week, a waiter at Buffalo Wild Wings and then Dave and & Buster's. And then from there, I was like, all right, I'm out. I graduated I, May 7th. I was the best man at my best friend's wedding at the time, May 18th. And then I took a six-month plea deal, May 29th. So it was a very packed May. Mm. And I ended up getting a misdemeanor plea deal. I did jail. I went in jail for six months. That was a horrible experience. Don't recommend. I get out of jail. <laughs> you don't say. Don't recommend. Don't you don't don't recommend. Recommend. If you can skip it, you got to skip it. <laughs> it's not good. Super, 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 super bad. And granted, I was in county jail. So I hear stories about guys who went to like, and this is in Virginia, right? So if like oh. you go to county jail in like Essex County, I'm sure you're going to have a much, much more you know, pleasant experience, right? That's where I spent my jail time. Oh, it's a horrible experience. It's the worst. <laughs> I was just planning my jail uh, <laughs> trip. Yeah, uh, my jail trip. No, <laughs> man, you got to go. Yeah. 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 Should we do jail time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's a bonding experience, for sure. Um, I don't recommend. I will say, though, although, like, that whole experience happened, because the reason why I went to jail is a girl made a false accusation, and then about, like, we had, like, cooked up at a party. She made a false accusation. So from there... I took, I was like going back and forth for two years, but you have to understand like in le- in law, I'll give you guys great legal advice. You can take this to agree. Few tips. One, do not get a public defender, no matter what. Bad advice. Bad decision. Second, don't be poor if you want to get in trouble. You want to spend a lot of money on good attorneys and educate. Three, find people who have already gotten in trouble. Because me, I never really got in any trouble. No one in my family ever got in legal trouble. So when this happened, we thought like I was going to be executed. So the code red was just like went so high. In reality, I did six months in like county jail and I like survived. But from there, I got out. When I got out, I couldn't get a job. So mm-hmm. I remember the reason why I got into real one. The, the, I always say like in the beginning, I was ashamed, right? I had so much shame. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I got into real estate in reality was because I applied for this job. Literally, like I'm not kidding you, like cleaning old people who are mentally handicapped for twelve dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. And there was three rounds of interviews for this job. What so for three? It was like literally a month interview period. So it was like so serious, but it really for, wasn't serious. For the old people cleaning job. For the old people bathing <laughs> them job. You would oh bathe them. God. Like you would wipe them and they would get sores and like bed, oh. bedside man. It's very, very, very hard. 12 bucks an hour with a college degree. So finally at the third what? round interview, I'm not kidding. It was insane. How so did they get anybody? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fucking question. So anyways, I'm like, all right, damn, this sucks. Uh, I go to the third round interview. When I'm there, it's like this guy, he's like, hey, listen, we see real leadership potential in you in this company. You don't know. In a year from now, you could really be, you could be running your own house. Ten people under your care. I go, wow, this is like, and now you know, I'm, I'm experiencing this like next level, like God, like, you know, ah, this is very profound. Like, you know, Christ has redeemed me and is redeeming me and like healing me and giving me value again. I'm like, oh man, yes, Lord, my life's not over. I have hope to help people. Because that's what I went to college for. I went to college for pastoral ministry. I graduated 2016. So I'm like, oh, it's all, it's, it's all possible. I can't give up. So the third round of interview, I'm like so excited. You don't understand, I'm wearing a suit. You know what I mean? Like three-piece suit. Like I'm taking this incredibly seriously. So I'm like, oh, I'm a, you know, I, have, I'm, I have a record. So I'm like nervous the whole time. So the third round of interview, I sit down and the guy said, we see the leadership option. I'm like, yes. He's like, you never know, the year from now you could be making 18, 17, 19 dollars an hour, sir. I said, oh my God, this is amazing. It's crazy. It's crazy. Even though I was making more as a waiter, I just, because I got out of jail, my, val- my self-respect just plummeted, yeah. right? It was yeah. like worth nothing. So anyone who would pay me for anything, I'd be like, oh, it's amazing. Anyways, finally, the application that says, is like, uh, he goes, yeah, just file this application, then, you know, we should get you started in a week or two. I said, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah, thank you, sir. So I look at the application, it says your name, great. And then he doesn't ask you your birthday. It was like your name, phone number, and then it asked you like, have you ever been cons- convicted of a sexual crime? My crime, my misdemeanor is sexual battery. So I was like, Damn. And give you yes or no. I clicked the yes box. And then it give you like two sentences. I'm like, how do I explain like a two year legal battle with like two different public defenders in two sentences? So I'm like, I can't do that. So I said, falsely accused. <laughs> That's all I wrote. <laughs> no, <laughs> I said, falsely were. accused dash plea deal. And then I was like, maybe I'm going to get it. I didn't get it. So I walked to my car and the guy oh immediately God. like stopped the application. He goes, oh, um, yeah, we're going to get back to you. I was like, oh. so I walked to my car and I started crying mm. on my way home. I mean, on my way to my car. Mm. And I called my friend Ben at Honeywell. And he's like, hey, you know, you have a friend, Juan Carlos, who is a realtor. He's been trying to get you in real estate. Why don't you just try it? So I go, ah. I call Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos says, Brendan, you should do it. But I'll put you on. I'm like, listen, I just called the school. It's $440. He goes, bro, I'll pay for you to go to school. Just go. Trust me. You're getting, this is the best decision of your life. So I go, ah, okay. I go. I pay. Uh, I'm sorry. It was $400. Bu- I, he only gave me $400. He wouldn't give me the $440, which is like, I'm very grateful for the $400. He put me on. And I said, bro, I need another 400, I need another 40 bucks. He said, nah, it's all I have is 400, man. I can't give you the 40. I figure it out. 
So I said, okay. I called the school. I said, listen, can you negotiate with me? I have no money in my account. I literally had no money. And I owed my family like thousands of dollars. So I said, I have no money in my account. Can you like help me out? He said, well, if you write me a five, the lady said Acropolis and Wayne, she's like, if you write me a five star Google review, I'll give you like, I'll give it to you for 400, but you have to write it first. I said, okay, no worries. I just wrote it. She's like, okay, I accept it. And that nice. was it. So then I went, got in real estate, drunk Carlos mentored me. Fast forward like, you know, six, seven years and like a hundred different like milestones. I own like a bunch of property and I make like 12K a month residual off my properties. That's Amen. what I'm at. And, and you're on uh, billboards all, all over. I just got a new billboard today. Shout out. Uh, wow. new, another one. We have uh, four currently billboards in Newark. Yes. I think I passed one or two on the way here today. Come, you probably passed a new one because yeah. now I have one on the right. So I had one on the left side and I got one on the right side too now. So when you drive down, it's like, this is obnoxious. I just want to <laughs> say number one broker in Newark. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think three years running. This will be our fourth, fourth the, year. Yeah. This will be our fourth year. I 100% appreciate that. It, the cool part is there's like number such a discrepancy. In, number one in Essex County, right? No, number, not number one in Essex County. So this is what you got to learn about realtors. Realtors yeah. BS all the time. Everyone's number one. But the reality is like I actually am number one in Newark. I, I, I want to just say this because I think that, that I do, I really appreciate you being so forthcoming, so transparent, so mm-hmm. open and honest about your experiences, what you went through. Um, thank you for that. I actually, I kind of cried a little bit just wow. now. Um, and because I know, I, I love you, man. You're yeah, yeah, one of, of the, course. you are like the best guy I know. Um, you're, you're, you're the best dude. Oh, and I'm grateful that happened. That experience <laughs> did like really, not only for me as a man and a character, but like yeah. that experience really did like solidify my faith because up to that point, even still now we talk, we just had a deep talk the other yeah. night, but like up until that point, it's like, my whole life, I was just so desperately, desperately seeking the validation of others. Mm. When that mm. happened, I had like close friends go around the college cafeteria and be like, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Mm. And I didn't even tell them. So they were like basically betraying me without me even giving, they didn't even come to me and ask questions first. Wow. Yep. So to see, like, you were very supportive during that time. And I think that time for me was like, uh, did two things. One, it really solidified my faith because it's like, I really don't need their approval. I really already have the approval I need right. from the Lord. And then second, it honestly did show you, me who my real friends were. Like, mm. I had a friend who drove down to eight, my mother. I'll tell you, my mom's nuts. You ready? The jail had 15-minute uh, visitations. People always get visitations. Why? They all lived in Virginia. My people lived in New Jersey. So my mom, one time, she her car broke down. True story. She takes public transit from Rutherford to New York City, from New York City to uh, Roanoke, Virginia, a bus. From a bus, Roanoke, she takes another bus to Vir- uh, Lynchburg, Virginia, from there, she takes an Uber to a motel, oh does God. her hair and makeup, showers so she looks great when she sees me, quote unquote, <laughs> sees mother. me for 15 minutes and does everything again right back. Does not stay at the motel. She only took the motel shower. Wow. She did like 30 something plus hours of travel for 15 Holy minutes. Holy crap. Wow. Wow. Yeah. She said, I slept in the bus. That's all I needed. You want to know uh, something crazy, dude? So I was out, I was at, um, <clears throat> I was in S- San Diego mm. and I was getting lunch with this gentleman, Phil Green. He does about $56 million of annual revenue. He runs one of the most dialed-in operations I've ever seen on on wholesaling, fix and flip, buy and hold. It's incredible what he's been able to put together. Mm. Um, And his key thing is about hiring. He goes, you "You can't pay enough for great talent. Mm. I was like, Phil, how do you find great talent? That's my next question. And um, he... He said, he said, look, I'll give you, an, he, he starts talking about uh, Ray Dalio, reading mm-hmm. the book Principles. He said, we, I studied the CIA. And the CIA actually only hires people who've been through two to four levels of trauma, right? Um, four, anything above four, <clears throat> you're probably, it's going to be really difficult for you to f- fully recover. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's anything. a level beyond this you can't be hired. Yeah, you're, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're a lost cause. <laughs> well, if it's not, you can't be redeemable. Yeah, but, redeem- you know, yeah, it's, but just, it's a long yeah, you're you're a wild card. card. Yeah. You're a wild yeah. card. Yeah. Below two, you haven't been in, through enough pain. Mm. To, you haven't been, you, you know, you, ha- you weren't thrown into the forest and said, come back with wolf skin on your shoulders or don't come back at all, right? You didn't yeah. go through the gauntlet. You didn't go through the fire. So you're not a warrior, right? And mm. so I... Like, how would you attribute who you are today to your success based on what you've been through in life? So, like, I would say recently. Recently, I had two team members. They were transaction coordinators. They left at the same time. 
And it was like, for anyone in the real estate world, it's like a paralegal, right? So like, and we managed like 50 to 60 transactions at a time. So when they left, they gave two weeks notice. So it was like a bomb. And it was, and it was some emotional because I was close to them, but about all this stuff. So when that happened, it was like a nuke in my life. And I had like, a, my father was ill, all this stuff. So now I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be crazy. There's no chance. How am I going to make it? And then what I realized was this. I literally talked to my wife. My wife said to me, she said, Brendan, you've already like, no, no, not my wife. I'm sorry. My uh, friend Bennett. He's like, Brendan, you've already been to jail. Like, there's no way this was as hard as jail. I was like, <laughs> that's true. I've already been through. Like, there's no way it was that bad. Right. Yeah. So I'm looking back. I'm like, it's really not that bad. So I think with a gauntlet, it just gives you perspective. Mm. Like, I have a guy right now who's working with us. Like, he can't seem to, like, the most minor things he's dropping the ball on. Like, hey, return this today. Returns tomorrow. He's like, oh, I'm so stressed. I'm like, dude, <sighs> there's levels. And, like, his, le- it's, not, it's not mean, though. It's like, right now, what he's experiencing is a lot for him. Right. But I've already experienced so much. Right. So it's like, it's. You come back a warrior. Yeah. Oh, you come back a warrior. And not just from jail. It's from the recovery of jail. Mm. That's what, the jail yes. experience. No, it's like, yes. okay, who are you afterwards? Mm-hmm. Like the overcoming. Cause there are a lot of people, the, the for people who get out of jail to go back in, it's like 20% of people. It's like yeah. a huge number. I think it's higher than that. Yes. Yeah, I think it's higher. I just made this number up. But basically what ends up happening in my mind with jail is like a lot. My dad told me this. My dad said like, you're the one person who never go back to jail, but a lot of people who never go back, they never left. I'm like, what do you mean, Dad? He goes, because your mind has been imprisoned. <clears throat> They've been just put in limitation in cages forever. Wow. And that's what happens, especially in America, where it's like one in five black men go to, you know, America's crazy. Dude, listen to this. America represents one in 20. This is from the 13th Amendment, these stats, right, on uh, Netflix. You can check it out. One in 20 people, uh, one in 20 people in the world are American, like American citizens. However, one in five are incarcerated individuals in the world are in America. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we're like disproportionately, we love locking people up. It's, well, it's, 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 it's business. It's a great business. It's a it's a private great. private industry. Great I mean, business. They have great. Highly recommend if you want to just like. I mean, they course. have these yeah these institutions, and then they have to fill them right. Like, yeah. and if they're, if it's not filled, right, it's like a hotel that's vacant, right, or yeah. or a multifamily. Brother, yeah, that's what right? it's like. Literally, okay. it, it's like two dollar an hour labor, three dollar an hour labor. Right. Like American labor, like Victoria's Secret, a lot of stuff go there. Like airlines, some of their stuff comes from jail labor. And they pitch it, prison labor, and they pitch it like, hey, we're giving these convicts, like, an opportunity. It's like, you give them three bucks. I'm, I'm curious who the, who the uh, majority owner is of all the prisons in, this, in, in the U.S., if I had to put money on it, mm. BlackRock. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Black that, that's a safe bet. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, some way, yeah, it'll get back to following up. They yeah. figured out how to control just about everything. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Well, so I, I want to get into you know some of the stuff that you've done to become so successful. But I mean, just to your point, I think you know, I think about this a lot. Like having gone through so many problems, mm-hmm. I think our generation now like doesn't have any problems. Mm-hmm. So, like the biggest problem is like oh like my phone broke or whatever mm-hmm. like th- this guy went to jail right like <laughs> what's yeah, what's, don't what, jail. What, what's harder right and so I'm always grateful for having gone through tough times mm-hmm. and I, I wonder you know for you like how often are you referring back to like wow like how how great is my life considering so this like so I'll give you like a really really crazy thing and this is like trauma that is like I definitely got to heal from so I bought a property in April. Uh, yeah, April for April or May for a hundred uh, May. I bought property in May for one hundred five thousand. I just closed on it this week for a hundred and like I net basically I netted forty two grand. No, pause, let me do it again. So I bought it for one hundred and five in May. I sold it for one hundred sixty in like last week, right? So my check comes one hundred fifty two grand. I bought cash, right? One hundred fifty two grand. I'm super super happy, right? That same day, we had to spend like ten thousand or eleven thousand dollars on billboards. The amount of fear that came over me. It was crazy. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna go poor. And I was telling my wife last. This is the last night. I'm like, Dad, I, I think finances are a big deal. She goes, Brendan, we just got a check for 152 thousand dollars. What are you saying? <laughs> like, we're good. Like this 152 grand, we're good. What are you saying? So I think like the problem is those kind of experiences and like growing up poor, etc. They don't leave you as mm-hmm. much as you want to reflect back. So you got to actually be like very, very, very logical and say, okay, what is reality? And that's why it's good to like marry like a good woman. Will I get you? Because the further you get from jail the further really becomes. So like the, you can't like, you can't live off that like seven year ago challenge. You have to live on like new challenges that come your way and be like, okay, I, you know, yes, this problem is here right now, but I've already solved a problem like this last year. And I've already felt like I was going to go poor two months ago. And I didn't go poor. Mm-hmm. So I think I'll be okay. I got, um, 
I got a personal, another personal question. Oh man, this is a so n- you got deals a kid. dollars. There's no deals. Just you got you got a kid <laughs> now, right? Yeah. And I always think about this. Mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for the tough times, mm-hmm. right? Now when things get tough, I'm like, I'm a warrior, light work, mm. right? Um, it's okay, bring it on, whatever, right? And my fear is that you know, as someone who's going to be wealthy and and be able to provide everything my kid needs, hopefully. Pers- on a personal level in a good place. Uh, I hopefully I'm not creating well, hopefully I'm not creating as much trauma as I went through on a personal level. But I also want my kid to come out an animal too, right? So where are you with that? How are you gonna So I do worry about that a lot because my big fear is I'm gonna spoil my kid and he's gonna be soft. Like that's like my biggest, biggest fear. Because like my ex- my life experience has been one that has demanded me to be hard. Mm-hmm. And just like even if you cry, like allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to feel, and then like process, and then you like pick up the sword and you go back to battle, and that's it. So like this is what a mentor told me that was really really good because I was kind of afraid to have kids when I was dating my wife. When I was dating my wife, Deb, I told her like oh, I don't want have kids. I didn't know I have kids. I thought it was <laughs> so crazy. Extreme, I'm like, why do we want to have kids? It's insane. <laughs> now I realize, you know, I was you know dumb. Well, not dumb, just scared. But this is what a mentor told me. My mentor told me your great grandparents mess up your grandparents this much. Your great grandparents mess up your grandparents this much. Your grandparents messed up your parents this much. Your only goal in life as a parent is to mess up your kids a little, little bit less. A little bit less, yeah. That's it. So when you have that thing, it alleviates all, alleviates all our pressure from you. Um, that's what, like, one thing I always talk to them about. I'm like, no matter what, this kid's going to be, like, massively wounded. Because, like, I know people who grew up in the most healthy households. I'm like, dude, how are you telling me that this wasn't, like, perfect? And he's like, nah, man, my dad just, he <sighs> really, blah, 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 blah. I'm yeah. like, dude, this sounds great. <laughs> like, this is nothing but it's every just smaller degrees smaller degrees and then it's the same thing with wealth right like it goes the other way like your parents made this much you'll make this much you'll build this much and then it goes like the opposite right so it's really cool do you feel like you're gonna leave your kids an in inheritance <sighs> the, so i hired, recently hired this financial planner guy right to help me like because i i make money but i really don't like my business expenses i have to the penny but this guy basically like helps you manage your personal so i'm like well how much do i actually need to live each month these kind of things I don't really know. Yeah. I just always focus on making more money. Yeah. So it's been good, but I was like, at the same time, you always feel like, well, I don't know if I can retire. Like, what's that really? And we don't like to talk about those things, but that's truth. Very few people know, like, here's actually how much money I spend on, like, going out to eat. Like, how much you spend on lunch every, like, month going uh, out to eat? You know I can tell you that for the, what the business m and is, <laughs> uh, my it. personal, I have no idea. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. My, my business, I know to the penny. My personal, Deb's, we're just guessing constantly. Yeah. So inheritance wise, he's been teaching me because he's like personal. He's like, when you get to when your kid gets a five to ten, we're gonna give them like uh, tally marks, and like every tally is like we're not doing allowances, anything like that. Like you earn everything every step of the way when it comes to finances to teach your kids and like, okay, hey, when you're ten years old, you like that car. Okay, what would that car cost you? So will I give my kid an inheritance? I think like a uh, book of Pro- Proverbs, I believe it is, or Solomon Kings. Yep. It says, like, you told me this verse, yes. right? Say this verse. When you told me that verse, I was like, oh. Leave your kids and, and the kids after. And I, I used to not want to, but now, biblically, I have to, right? No, no, no <laughs> that, bro, what, what is it? Yeah, it's what a powerful it? verse. It says, a righteous man. I Honestly, you, you're okay. you're the pastoral okay. well, you uh, know, ministry graduate. Oh, man. Okay. 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 You're going to have to pull oh, that one up, awkward. brother. You know what? Listen, Nyack, if you're looking at me. Basically, need to, a righteous man leaves his children's children an in inheritance. Um, wow. So, no, not only inheritance, it says more. This is why. Oh, so, you it. give enough money that your children can give your children in it, mm-hmm. or you just skip what whole yeah, generation. <laughs> yeah, which one? <laughs> Space it out a little bit. I don't know. Okay, we're going to find it right here, guys. Don't worry. Don't Maybe worry. Josh knows. Josh, Josh probably you know knows. This? Josh? Nope. You know. I don't. No, he doesn't. You tap but, back he, into that. I don't know. I'm not the guy. Nah, me hit, the, hit the background. Oh. Anyway, anyway, nah, let's nah, move on. Let's move on. Let's that. move on from this. Well, you can find it. But I, Okay, I just got it okay. here. Now we got it. Now we, now you. Okay. Boom. Okay, there we go. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Perfect. But so elsewhere, it says, basically, on, it talks about leaving land. So, like, our version of real estate. Uh. Yeah. So, that's why it's so cool. Cause it's like, a good children leaves his children, like, jewels and land. Mm. So well, assets. Like, assets. Basically, yeah. It's yes. like things of value. Like, not appreciate. Like, think not about just that. cash. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, it, like, leaves assets, right? So, I yeah. think that's really cool. And so, but, yeah. but do you think it's, do you think it's leaving enough for your children that they can give the next generation something or do you think it's skipping a whole generation 
So uh, you guys caught me at a really good time for a podcast because I've been going on like deep thought about like life and like purpose and masculinity. The way I see it, like think about back in the day, how masculinity traded hands, right? So you're, we're all men in this room, right? Great. You know, I'm more like, don't cancel. I'm like binary, male, female, right? Let's can, go with that. You can cancel on. Yeah, we're good. We're good with that here. But this is like how I see things, right? So in large part, at least, right? At the soul level, right? So then the way I see that is like this. So masculinity though is like bestowed upon another man. So you think about like how men used to be raised, like their fathers. Let's say you were, um, uh, let's say real estate, right? Example, right? Uh, no, we'll even go more traditional. Let's say you were a uh, woodworker, right? If I was a woodworker and John, you were my like son, or I, you were my father, I'll be the son, right? So if you're my father and at the age of like 10 or 11, I'm literally spending large amounts of time with you in the woodworking shop. Uh, it, it's very Western idea that 18, you kick your kids out and they're like, they're supposed to be like adults. It's very, very Western. And the more like biblical times, it was at 13, you were viewed as an adult. You hear your bat mitzvah, right? So and when I have my bat mitzvah, I'm now a man, right? In the view, in the eyes of the community, you give me responsibility in your woodworking shop. When I'm 25, guess what I'm doing? Taking over that woodworking shop. I'm, no, I'm still in line with you. The masculinity that you're pouring into me is so much. I'm only taking over when you're done. Mm. If, you, if you're 70 and I'm 40, guess what we're doing? Still working together. We're gr- working together. So the masculinity is being bestowed, bestowed, bestowed. And guess what I now have at 40? I have a son. Mm. So it's like when you talk about like leaving it, I, I don't think it's like a go, 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 stop, go, 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 go. What I hope my son will do is like overlap with me. Mm-hmm. And then his son will overlap with him. Mm. And his son will overlap with him. And masculinity and wealth is truly being responsibly passed on responsibly because you have a lot of people i told this one client right now he's like listen i'm selling all my two or three four families because i don't think my kids can handle it i just want to buy a building hire a property manager and that will like help them mm. i'm like that's terrible tell them i'll me. buy a couple of them Come uh on. there we go brendan uh we're gonna dial back into real estate now please okay <laughs> it's just so personal. so <laughs> it's too much you said you did you have a uh, business that you're kind of slowing down. Yeah. Airbnb uh, property management. And that's across the board for all Airbnbs, unfortunately. Um, and you have one business that is going great, right? Yeah. Um, I want to just dive in here because it's, you are where you are now, mm-hmm. but I'm sure if you, if the seven year, seven year earlier version mm-hmm. of you came to you now, create a roadmap <sighs> for him. Tell them how to get to where you are now. So that would be like really impossible for like the content here to make it super simple. It'd be like three things. One, do not invent anything. Just steal from people who have done it. Copy them to the letter. Success leaves clues. Done. Second, stay humble. Rookie mindset. Do not think that you are the one who's going to be a pioneer. I've lost so much money trying pioneer Me crap. Too. Just do Same. boring stuff again and again and again and again and again and again. And then three, I would tell them, like, every person you encounter, think to yourself, like, if this person, if this relationship was the single determining factor of my future success, how would I treat this encounter? Mm, I like that. Because that's, like, really a big deal. So, like, I think about even, like, you two, right? Like, realistically, in the beginning, you guys were sending me listing referrals, and I was just, like, doing what I would do. Like, nothing's changed in terms of how I, ha- like, how I see it. Because even when it was just one or two deals, I was like, oh, you guys should try this. Or, or maybe you guys try that. So I was doing more than what was expected. That's how I see it. And you guys, in return, guess what? Did more than what was expected. You didn't just send me a lesson. You're like, okay, we're going to help you incorporate. We're going to go above and beyond. You know what? Uh, we think this is fair, but we're going to be generous here with you, Brandon. I'm like, wow, thank you so much. Right? So you guys did the same thing with me. And now, four or five years later, in an industry where people are current, constantly trying to steal from each other, we have great partnership. We build together. So I would say that. Like, definitely, definitely don't, like, try to be inventive. Don't be initiative, like, innovative. I don't believe, like, no. Okay. You, you know what's... You, you touched on it there. Um, we've been through a lot. And, like, when we started out, both of our businesses were pretty small. Mm-hmm. There's kind of nothing there. And How many units do you think you guys were wholesaling five years ago? Like, not none. Yeah. <laughs> none. <laughs> Literally, none. Yeah. Um, but, like, as we've grown together, you know, there's been a lot of points where it's like, hey, we need to work out this new agreement. Or, like, mm-hmm. this doesn't make sense. It's not fair. And uh, and one thing we've always been able to do is come to terms. And it hasn't yeah. always been, hasn't always been like super simple, right? Like no, it's never it's never simple. And I always feel like I'm losing, and I always feel like I'm winning. Yeah, and that's been like the hardest thing for me to rationalize. But uh, what what makes our partnership so good? Because I think that's one of the 
I, I, me, me personally, anytime someone's like, oh, we'll just partner, I'm like, uh, I don't want any more partners. I think I'm good. Oh, right. Yeah. And no, 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 no. what we've had has been, has been great. Honestly, you want to hear my, my take? Yeah. It's because we like, we over deliver on what the partnership is. Mm -hmm. So the partnership actually just is send me deals. I send you referral. The end. That's what literally the terminology of the partnership is done. But then when we did, when we bought, when we like, when we sold you guys basically 10% equity, mm -hmm. we aligned interests. And I think that is the big thing. So like when interests are aligned, visions are aligned, right? And you say, well, you know what? I'm only here to get, a, uh, if I just treat you guys like a listing, like Zillow, for example, mm -hmm. it would not be a good partnership. But because I'm like, okay, how can I help their business grow? Okay, how can I support Eric as a person? Okay, how can I support Choi as a person? And then you guys are the same way with me. Like, hey, Brandon, something happened with this uh, agent or your staff. I didn't really like that. I would, warn, I, would, I would watch out about that. You guys don't have to do that, right? But because we align interests and we go above and beyond and over deliver over a long period of time, it really helps. Also, it helps that I'm like, uh, you know, childhood friends with Choi. Cause I like, was going to say. Yeah, it's so, do you know how hard it is to replace 16 years of trust? Mm -hmm. It would take you another 16 years. That's a long time. You don't have that in business. You have another 16 years to start a new relationship. Da, 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 da. I got arrested with Troy in high school. Yeah. Like, yep. you can't. And he took the blame. It was mine, but they tried to pin it on me. The, the weed. He took the blame. I already had. I was already arrested one time. Yeah. I think, I mean, it, part of it's that. But because you guys are such good friends, there's always communication. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Right, and I think communication is the biggest thing. Right, there's never a chance for That's resentment true. to grow. I don't think you have to be li lifelong friends, but I think you have to always be communicating because, mm. hey, this doesn't work. We need to switch this. I'm not happy about mm. this thing, and that's always happening between you guys. Yeah. And and I think because of that, right, there's never been a chance for us to harbor. Oh, Brendan's screwing us over. This that like yeah. it's, it's never been yeah. that because there's yeah. always communication. I trust you in my life, I, and I that's and that's the worst part. Because I feel the weight of that responsibility. I'm like, no, I got to do the right thing. If you lied to me in, in business, I know, it'd you break, would break yeah. my heart in pieces. You I know. can't even imagine. I know. I feel the weight, trust <laughs> me. I hate it. I wish it wasn't like that. I hate it. I hate it. I feel honest, it. brother. I feel the weight. I'm telling you, it's a weight. Yeah, it's, I really look up to you, man. I I, and honestly, it shows. And it like, makes me feel like, whoa. Like, I don't deserve. And that's like a self-worth thing, right? Like, I do deserve you to look up to me. Like, I am a good guy. Yeah. But we got to remind ourselves as business owners, like, uh, Troy and I was saying something. He's like, every entrepreneur has a high degree. Like, nine out of 10 entrepreneurs have like a high degree of shame, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they strive so much to overcompensate. Yep. So, you know, that's why a lot of men like isolate, right? Because they're like, oh, I don't want anyone near me. Because they're, they're not tough guys. They're just ashamed. Mm -hmm. Like this one guy on Instagram, I'm not going to say names, but like this guy's a big jerk. Big jerk. He like would like DM me, real estate guy. One time, you know, whatever. Very big jerk. And I used to think, I'm like, man, this guy's so mean, so mean. And then when that clicked in my head, I'm like, this guy, I would never want to partner with him, to your point. I'm like, he's just constantly overcompensating. Why? He's just ashamed. Yeah. He's just deeply small on the inside, and he needs to get big. He needs to be a bully. Why? Because he doesn't want anyone close to find out who he is. Because mm. in reality, he's tiny. And not in truth, but in his own self-image. In his worth. Yeah. yeah self-worth. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we that affects your money, big time. Huge. Oh, big. Because you, can get, you, you can't be a great leader. Not only that, like, yes. So you can make good money with that mindset. Maybe you make like 500, 400, 300, right. 200. Great for you. Great. But you will never build true wealth out of a deep place of shame because you can't partner with people in a mm -hmm. healthy relationship to grow the business. Absolutely. 100% right. Heal. You could get up to, yeah, four, three, 500 grand great, on your own. Great. You can't build one or two people. No. But you need to have, because if you don't love yourself, how do you really love someone else? Yeah, right. and to lead is to love. Like, yeah. to love is to serve others. That's the definition. Like, put others above yourself, not in, like, a toxic way, but in, like, a, hey, I'm putting you above me. Yeah. Right, right. Dude, I couldn't agree more. One thing that we do for our team that I think is one of the best things we've done all the like, past, like, year and a half is we pay for 20 free counseling. We pay for 20 counseling sessions per team member per year. Wow. Really? And we, yeah, we pay. And if we have a hookup, I'll give it to everybody. It's 75 bucks, 85 bucks, 90 bucks. Yeah, like past that. that. Yeah, past that. People are paying 170. We have a bulk package. So great. Yeah, great rate, honestly. <clears throat> great rate. We, we, we should get bulk discount over here. Yeah. yeah. We should get <laughs> economies together. <laughs> yes. yes. Maybe we get it down 65. to 65. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my guy's good. Yeah, the guy's a good guy. But basically, that's what I'm saying. We go. And we've had, our team is a little bit healthier emotionally. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of your problems in the company are not SOP problems. Some of your problems are you people are just toxic as hell. Yeah. And they need like a therapist and you can don't you, have time for it. Can you actually connect with Ryan on that? Yeah. And 100%. then and send out a group email yeah. and get that That's done. Not, yeah, that sounds uh, like a good uh, tell Katrina to do that for us. Um, hey, Brendan, 
We got to dial back in it's to the business. Thing. Okay, go. Okay. <laughs> so. This is just getting away. I'm, I'm, I like it. I like it. I love it. I yeah. love this. I could talk about this but stuff. But our viewership is not. But do you know the truth is? Here, like, we're doing our own podcast, you know, inspired by you guys. Real lives and real estate. And mm. reality is, like, deals and dollars, it's really not that complex. <clears throat> like, in terms of making money in real estate. It's like a formula. It's like, right. you know what Tony Robbins says? There's a science of achievement and uh, arts of fulfillment. The reality is I know so many people who have succeeded in real estate, but they don't feel fulfilled. Why? Because they're not talking about they're not focusing on their real lives. Like you can't only run away from your wife for so many years until you get divorced. Right. We're gonna talk about I just I just came back from a mastermind. This is the keynote speaker said this. He said the results that you get come from the systems that you create. Mm. Right. And so the result that you wanted was X amount of annual revenue, right? You got mentorship mm. by the number one bro broker in the state of New Jersey, Rob Dukansky. Uh, Rob, if you're listening to this, you know, have an utmost level of respect. Please get on my podcast. Come on. <laughs> I try to get him, on. I get try, him here. I try to get him here. He said he doesn't do podcasts. I was like, just think about it, please. Come on. So, so the, the results that you get come from the systems that you create. Yeah. Right. And you got the mentorship for that. Mm -hmm. You said, I'm not trying to figure this out on my own anymore. So what are the best teams in the country doing to scale and operate their real estate businesses from, and, and just walk me through kind of like systems, what the team looks like, okay, where you this, generate leads. Yeah, this is a little bit tough. So I'm going to, so I'm actually, I just spent $10,000. Oh, well, great story there. I'll leave it for a clip. But basically I was going to, I'm going to the Gary Keller summit in, I'm going to his private mastermind on the ranch. His ranch in November, wow. I spent 10K. And honestly, I was going to buy a Rolex. I was like, I got to buy a Rolex. I'd love to go there. Well, unfortunately, you can't because you have to be KW and got to do a certain amount of GCI, like gross commission income. So I'm going there and it's literally ranch. His ranch, we're spending two nights at his hotel, going to his restaurant. The guy owns like everything you can own, he wants to buy. He bought a restaurant because he plays like classic uh, rock music and it was shutting down. He's like, I'm just going to buy it. The only requirement is you have to keep playing like this kind of music. It's like pay homage. Like it doesn't make money. He just like was passionate. So he said, I'll, I'll buy it and just run the restaurant. Like, like he's losing money. He just like writes off, writes off. Right, it doesn't matter. He just does it for passion. It's insane. The point of the story is this. When I go to these masterminds, I always, always, always think to myself, I'm like, man, this is a crazy amount of money. And it was a cheap, it was, they were cheap. $100,000, $1,200, $1,500, $800. I just spent 10 grand. Here's what I've learned. Here's what the top real estate teams are doing across country. And you have to understand, the average realtor does five to six deals a year. Uh, average. Across the country. Realtors, the bar of entry is so low. Surprised it's even that high. I, I think it's four out of six. I said five. I hesitated. The bar, the, that's a, a, a New Jersey a National Association of Realtors statistic, but whatever. The point is this. Realtors overall are so incompetent and so, like, I feel bad. I'm not saying meanly. Like, there's, it's like, it's like you have a great, great girl at home, great wife, but you're cheating on her every night. It's like, what are you doing? You have so much opportunity. You a great family. What are you doing? It's like that. It's like they have a great opportunity. They're cheating on their future self. Mm. Here's what realtors could do. Very pragmatic if you want to level up your real estate business. Very common sense. Nice. First, write down what you say to people called scripts. I used to hate them. That's not real salespeople. Real salespeople don't need scripts. No. Scripts allow you to build what's called a system. A system is just, we all have systems, some either by design or by default. So a script, all it's going to let you do is allow you to really put intentionality into how to sharpen your axe so you can cut. And once you have a sharp axe and you learn how to sharpen, I can teach you, John, how to sharpen. So that's called like, that's really a foundation. So great sale, great realtors all have scripts. They all say the same thing every single time. And they teach people how to say the things he said. That's one. The second thing great, great realtors do is they believe the path is in the math. I know every single, I know if I go on three, if I go, if I set three appointments, two will happen. If I set to, if I go to two appointments, I'm going to get one signed. So I can do the math. If I get one, I'm going to make X amount, right? KPIs, key performing indicators. They know the math. Right. And everything is like that. Your health is a number, right? How many times you want to work out? That's a number, right? Uh, what's, your, what's a healthy marriage? Well, a healthy marriage is this day, night, this much quality time. It's all numbers. Right. So path is in the math. Everything's tangible. Everything's metrics. So great realtors believe in that. So they don't think to themselves, huh? And the third thing above anything else that great realtors are doing our structure. They they come to the office at a certain time. They leave at a certain time. They have a they have a job. No great realtor I know doesn't have a job. Right. If you're doing real estate for freedom, you're you were sold a lie. 
Now, the great real estate teams are doing three major, major things. One, great real estate teams are decreasing the value of the agent. You say, Brandon, what's that mean? What the heck, you're a realtor. Agents are not the most valuable aspect in the real estate team equation. The most valuable asset are the support staff, your transaction and your ISAs and your basically your marketing network, right? These kind of things, your softwares. Because if you have a good realtor, an average realtor, you can make him really, really good if you have a great system, support staff, coaching, et cetera, you can make him great. You can bring it six to nine, six to nine, six to nine. But if you have really good realtors, like a nine, but your systems and support staff suck, they're gonna leave your team like that again and again and again and again. So the best real estate teams across the country are tripling down on their support staff and actually not tripling down on their agents. That's what I found for That's sure. Smart. And the best, best, best profitable they're charging clients who buy a house with them 1% purchase price. So that's what we're doing now. We're charging buyer loyalty wow. agreements. So if you want to work with us as a buyer, you got to do this. One, we offer two programs. It's called off-market opportunities. You're not doing that to my boy, Joshua. Joshua, I was pulling at the camera. Oh. <laughs> Golly. Joshua about to buy a property. He not paying. But no, I would, no, but he would. Why? Because we, because we created value, we set the fee, and then we collect the fee. And that's from Sarah Reynolds down in D.C., KW girl. Beast. She has like thousand plus units a year, fifteen hundred units a year. Wow. So what she does is basically she says like, hey, these are our two programs for us. These are our programs. We give you first access to property off market because we come across a lot of listings. We're a listing heavy team. Two, we give you love it or leave it. If you buy a house with us and you sell within the first year, you only need to pay the buyer agent commission. You're not going to pay us a dollar. We'll sell it to you for we'll sell it for free. If you regret it, no worries. You can leave it. Before that, and and on top of all our additional services, transaction, blah 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 educating, vendor network, whatever, you're going to pay 1% of purchase price. So we have, like, we, right now, we just sold the highest price three family. David Figueroa, shout out. Shout out. This guy sold it in on Bergen Street. 25 by 100, three family, no garage, no driveway. 995000 He got paid, I think it was 2.25% commission, whatever, but he his buyer paid him 1% of the purchase price wow. on top of the 2.25 he got. Wow. So he got 325 on the buy side, he made more than the listing agent. Hmm. That gets added to the purchase price? Yes. It gets, I don't, not, not, no, not added by the purchase price. The buyer wrote a check at closing to our brokerage. But we also negotiate. Does it get financed? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter. This is our fee. This is our value. Think about how crazy is it is. Is it financeable guys. most of the time? Yes, it's very financeable. Not most of the time, though. We're like 50-50. It, what, what is the... What is the um, yeah, what's the determining factor? Uh, if we can negotiate for the buyer and the seller, we can work out a concession, great. In this market, you're not getting seller concessions, man. The buyer has to pay. Oh, so oh, so you're you're actually at you're actually trying to get the seller. The only way that it could get financed is if the seller provides a concession equal one, to the amount of It's that like closing 1%. costs. It's like closing costs. Can you just raise the price one percent and then we do could, it? But uh, in this market, people are waiting for appraisals. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's tough. No, yeah. dude. No, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's but, great. So that's but that's where from the masterminds and across the country that's becoming popular, especially with this lawsuit. I don't know if you guys saw Remax just settled fifty five million lawsuit with uh this massive class action lawsuit going against all the brokerages because like the way that's structured right now, when agents present listing presentations, it's like the seller has to pay the buyer's agent's commission. When it's like not allowed, it's like against fair consumer, whatever it is, this laws, right? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and basically the buyers, right? Like the way that's going to be structured in the very near future is that just like a listing agent has to negotiate their fee to the seller, the buyer's agent's going to negotiate their fee to the buyer. And that's going to be it. So if you're not really good at setting, like creating value, setting your fee and collecting your fee, you're going to be beat. You're kidding me. This, is, this has been going on for like six months. They got to change. The, the, the banks got to change the way they finance then. This is going to be a problem. This is not going to be a problem. Is there is, any banks that finance? There's the brother, this has been going on. This is like 50. Remax just paid $55 million. It's crazy, bro. That's already a problem. It's a $55 <clears throat> million problem for one brokerage. You imagine all the others. Okay, all right. So I just want to dial back in there. You, 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 yeah, sorry. From the front end. Okay. So you talked about KPIs. Mm -hmm. right, I'll give you an example of, of a KPI for us. We get 350 seller leads. I'm sorry, guys. I just ran a power hour and my throat is so hoarse. I'm screaming. <clears throat> Bear with me. <laughs> we get 350 one. seller leads a week. We convert a, every 50 seller leads. I know we get one deal. Mm. We, right? So I do know that I need to set up, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to set up 10 virtual appointments in or 10 opportunities to convert to one contract, right? Cool. So like, but you got to also dial back into how many calls are you going to make? Mm. 
mm-hmm. right? Oh, so, no, you go granular. Right. You have to reverse engineer the result that you want, mm-hmm. right? So if you want X amount of deals, you need to have X amount of leads. Yeah. You need to make X amount of calls. Yes. Yes. You need to have yes. X amount of opportunities. You need to send X amount of contracts. You need to have X amount of appointments. Oh, man. And then you need to know how many times when it goes into attorney review, how many times it exits attorney review. If it exits attorney review, how often does that close? Yes. How often when you and, sell and that? The more, <gasps> so there's a thing. So like one, you it's, you can't do if you're doing this for now. You can't do you can't just oh these are my KPIs. Right. It doesn't work that. Your first step in getting KPIs is actually tracking what you're already doing. Yes. Yep. And it may take you literally six months yep. because there is a variable. Like right now, we had an attorney that was bad, so the data you have is skewed. So, but we've been tracking for two years. Three, mm. two and a half, uh, since Traction. So about just two and a half, we read the book, EOS, Traction. Yes, so when you book. Right after you guys did, we read it. Right after. It was like, great you guys ready? You recommend it to me? I started reading it. Boom. Actually, that's what happened. Yeah, I think you recommended it to me, and then maybe you bought did me we, a copy. Did we get the same, uh, you, you hired the same consultant? No, we didn't. No, no. You, you didn't guys hire same, Sharper? No, we didn't. We should have hired. Now, looking back, I would have made a lot more money. So, yeah. But the cheap. Crazy. Super cheap. Cheap. Cheaped Vegas, out. Cheap. Super Cheap-ed stupid. You cheaped out. You got, and you're cheaping out on Brad Chandler. Oh, God. Oh, God. Brad Chandler, I have nothing but love for you. So um, <laughs> he's looking. He's like, he actually texted me, actually. You got to do it. I know. Okay. He, he pushed me on it, too. I didn't do it. So. Ah, okay. John, can we hear from you today? Can we Can we hear from John? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> taking all this in. <clears throat> what, do you, what, what questions you got for me, John? Let me hear about, so obviously I'm on the financing end, right? So okay. we were talking about before, I think before we started, rates were, you were mm-hmm. killing when rates were two and a half, two point seven five percent 2.75%, right? Yeah. I'm sure we all were. So like now, right? Residential rates, I would assume are what? Seven to seven and a half. I know people are eight quoting eight plus already. Okay. So definitely in the sevens, like yeah. how obviously that's impacting, I would have to imagine that's impacting your business pretty significantly. Oh, it's brutal. Brutal. Like the buyer pool is just so much less. Um, mm. And people are saying like, uh, one thing I really don't like when people say like marry the house, they the rate. Not just because it's corny, but I feel like it's just like dumb. I don't know why I just don't like when people say it, but it has affected a lot. What we're doing right now, like our, like, our objection handling of that is very basic, super basic. We say, and this is actually from KW. <coughs> they say, uh, when the mastermind, they say, hey, John, if I could find you, you know, I definitely agree, rates are very high. John, let me ask you a question. <sighs> if I could find you a house that suited the lifestyle you and your family were looking to live with a monthly payment you could afford, would you be a buyer in today's market? Absolutely. Oh, mm. great. And that's what I do. So what payment would you need? And then I just reverse engineer that. Got it. Because when people say the rates are too high, what they're really saying is like, I'm afraid of the market because no one says like oh, i love this house I, I can afford that payments but the rates are high no they're just afraid of the right. like the market and what's going to happen oh they're anxious so when you calm down say wait if you can comfortably afford this though are you good to go and then yes okay great let's move forward then the whole rate sensitivity matter goes out the window so that's always now investment in the investing world very that different it, that it yeah. Matters. Yeah, because right now like i'm i'm trying to cash out refi on my uh this house in uh carney and i'm like dude i cannot cash a refi i have to sell this into a bigger building mm-hmm. this is brutal 1031 immediately. It's like, I would not cash flow at all. I would be negative. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I, yeah. I would think that it would, it would take a lot of buyers out of, out of the market, but at the same time, there's still buyers, right? Like, like affordability is like a 40 year low, right? Uh, mortgage applications. I think John, you know, way more than me, but I heard it was like 30 year low mortgage applications. Uh, so there's still buyers, but the buyers are few and far between. It's tough too, because like, I was just listening to this, um, I was listening to thing on NBC. But basically what they were saying is like home builders after the crash stop producing, right? You can't produce fast enough. But more importantly for like, there's just, it's 90% of Americans have a rate 5% or lower. 80% of Americans have homeowners, right? Have a rate 44% uh, or lower. So dude, you're trapped in your house. Now, thankfully like life events do happen. Or like, you know, this, I just, re- I just was listening to this. Life events happen. Like ultimately if you have three kids, what are you can do? You can stay in your house. You have two bedroom. No, you got to move at the mm-hmm. condo, man. You just had a third kid. So eventually, people got to move. Yeah, but man, I don't know. It's br- it, there's much less buyers. So like we're locking in on skills, locking in, locking in, locking in on like how to handle objections. You, you think? I feel. <clears throat> I feel like we're six months away from really feeling it. That's what I, I, that's my my feeling. I think like we're six months away from sellers waking up because sellers do not wake up yet. They're like I'm sure you guys see it on the investment side, right? They're like, dude, the market's so hot. Bah, 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 bah. I'm like, my guy. And the oh the way I can be killing sellers, oh man, dude. But what's gonna break before you go? What's Hold on, I wanted to hear yeah, it. Okay, it's okay. not like he's so. Good. Wow, this is one thing I do with sellers like that. Okay, so this is how I help. Oh man, I love. I'm so grateful I'm here. Thank you guys for having me. I hope this gives value to you guys. Yeah, this is great. So like one thing I do with sellers is like when I'm talking to them on a listing appointment, 
and they're like, no, you know, my market's 500. My house is so much. I said, no, yeah, honestly, hundred percent. A lot of sellers, you know, they can't even pause on. So I know they can't even afford to buy their own house right now. So I say, you know what? I do. I agree. Your house is amazing, Eric. I wish you would have called me last year. I probably could have gotten, but let me show you what 500,000 right now. Let me show you what that mortgage payment is. So when I show them that 500,000 is like a $4,500 monthly payment, 4,700 monthly payments, they're always the same exact thing. They go, oh my God. I go, oh, I'm sorry. I messed up. And then I put the correct rate. So I always like slow down the rate <laughs> and I hit the rate where it's supposed no. to be. And they go, oh my gosh, even higher. I said, yeah. And that's if they have a good credit score, sir. If. If. What's your credit score? Yeah. And they, well, they usually people credit score in our area is like 720 or less. So I'll be like, oh, yeah. They, no, you, you don't, you only do this. <laughs> oh, you're going, like, oh, you're, you're going to be going here. back again. Yeah, I'm like, uh, honestly, I don't want to show you because you're not going to believe me. <laughs> Sir, so you see what I'm saying? Like, how do you want to see your house in foreclosure with the next buyer? Yeah. No. Nope. Cool. So we got to be more realistic with pricing because the last thing I want is for your house to sit on the market for the next six months because no one can afford a 4,700 month payment. Oh, that's, question. that's actually, oh. that's cool. And I go, John, how, how many people do you know that could afford a 4,700 month payment? And everyone says, dude, no. Because Nobody. Because the people who they bought houses with in their friend group, that so economic, the socioeconomic demographic, they're not oh, there. wow. So it's brutal. I'm Brandon. telling you, it always works. Always Brandon. works. Always works. Brandon. It's one of my best things I do lately. Genius. I think it is pretty good. I'm glad you, you came like up it. with that one? I did. On the spot. That's super smart. Oh. Start. Let me ask you a question. Did, did, and, uh, by go wait. again and get it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you write that down on your script? You know I haven't. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, um, go ahead. What's up? Man? I think we're at an hour, right? Wow, that's long. Fifty. Um, do you have any last words of wisdom for for the audience? The audience is why. What kind of audience do you have? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I would I would love to be able to dial in on exactly what the professional demographic is on our audience, mm -hmm. but That'd be cool. uh, the ideal demographic, yeah. and avatar, <laughs> <laughs> real estate professionals, aspiring real estate professionals, and people who want to invest um, in real estate in our deals? Uh, first thing I would got to tell you is, it, what would I tell them? I don't know, man. There's a lot I would say. I would just tell you like where I'm at right now is like above anything else, one, like God loves you incredibly even if you're broke. So I think that's the like most important thing, like anchoring your value in that. Two, there's so much abundance happening right now. And like a lot of money is moving and a lot is happening. So like, I have a, this is my, like for deals, right? Like people who want to invest in your deals, you, the phone answers all problems. Like your phone, like my phone is a solution to all financial problems in my life. It's mm -hmm. just my phone. Mm -hmm. Cause the more people I call, the numbers go and I make more. So like the advice I would give you is you can be like panicked and you can be very afraid and you can be crippled by analysis paralysis. Instead of that, I would really recommend just consistently, like if you're an investor, right? Consistently do the activities that you know are going to lead to deals no matter what. Mm. And that's like the one piece of advice I give you. Like you can really spend, it's so fun talking about the market, but me talking about the market's not going to help me make money. Right. Like me picking up the phone and talking to people who are motivated, coachable, qualified sellers and buyers. Those are people who are going to help me make money. So those are the people I'm talking to. Right. So I would say that like, don't really worry about, don't mess and be ignorant. Like be educated, but like focus on the activities that directly make you money. Direct, and I'm not even talking about marketing. I'm talking about like one for one, like one for five, whatever, one for three, like, not even like, I'm going to have another billboard. That's cool. I'm happy. But like, I pick up the phone every single day. Control right. what you can control, right? That, and that's, that's it. Because it. it gives you such like empowerment mm -hmm. when you realize like, it's a lot of this is in your control. Yeah. That's exactly what you did, Eric. During uh, COVID, mm -hmm. picked up the phone. Yep. You just started calling people. Okay. That's, that's amazing advice. Brendan, I love you, brother. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Have a good one. We love you, bro. <laughs> Thanks,